There's a Pali word, bunya, which doesn't get much good press in the West, largely because it's translated as merit, which sounds like merit badges or brownie points. When people hear about it, it sounds like a, a very materialistic attitude toward training the mind, gathering up as many points as you can. Maybe we translate it another way. In one book I translated, I translated it as inner quality or inner worth. You can also translate it simply as goodness which unfortunately is a word that also doesn't get much used anymore. A while back I went on to Amazon and I typed in different words like honesty and truth and goodness just to see what came up. The truth was the worst. All the books were purporting to tell us the truth about all kinds of things which seemed very little, had very little to do with the truth. Goodness got mainly recipe books, how to make good cakes. It was mainly baking books. But stop and think about it. You'd like to have a life in which there is goodness, in which you can give of your goodness. And that's what bunya is all about creating goodness in the world through a gift of your goodness, developing your own goodness. Traditionally, there are three main types. There's generosity, virtue, and then meditation. So right now, as we're meditating, we're making bunya, or doing bunya. As the Buddha said, don't be afraid of acts of bunya, or another word for happiness. That's what it's all about, finding happiness in a way where you're not taking anything away from anyone else. In fact, you're actually finding happiness through giving. This is the kind of happiness that creates a sense of unity in the world. The happiness that comes from having things means that you have something and somebody else doesn't have it. And that creates divisions. But in the case of generosity, virtue, and meditation, there are no divisions. The happiness spreads around. The goodness spreads around. Take generosity, for instance. For example, usually it's giving material things, but it's also generosity of other kinds as well. You give of your knowledge. You give of your time. You give of your energy. You give your forgiveness. These are all good things to give. They don't need to cost any money. And the nice thing about generosity is it's totally free. In other words, the Buddha doesn't place any constraints on it. He said if you try to prevent someone from giving to someone else, you're creating obstacles for all three parties, the giver, the receiver, and yourself. So when King Basenity asked him, where should a gift be given, he said, give where you feel inspired, or you feel it would be well used. Then the king went on to ask him, well, when a gift is given, where does it give greatest fruit? And the Buddha said, well, that's another question entirely. You want to give to people who are free of greed, aversion, and delusion, or are working on that. But still, the important part about generosity is that you're not harming somebody else. In other words, you don't steal something to give. And you don't give gifts to people that are actually going to harm them. And you don't harm yourself in the process. But where you want to give, who you want to give, what you want to give, who you want to give to, excuse me, that's a matter of free choice. And that's an important point. The Buddha never pressured anybody to give. When he talked on the topic of generosity, it was after people had given something to make them rejoice in the fact that they'd done something good. But he's trying to make the point that 
we do have freedom of choice, and it's that freedom to give that feels really good. The times when you give because you have to give, doesn't they don't feel nearly as good as the times when simply out of the own goodness of your heart. You realize you have something, if someone else could use it well, you'd be happy to give it to them. This relates to his teachings on karma, that we do have freedom of choice in the present moment. The people who said that there was no worth in giving either said, well, if everybody is predetermined to do whatever they're going to do, then those who give and those who don't give, it's simply a matter of the stars or the creed of the world or past actions force them to do that, so there's no virtue in giving. And they were saying, no, there is virtue in giving. He's also saying that the people you give to, there's worth there. It's, there's no, it's not that there's nothing there, or the people get wiped out at death. They don't. They move on as wherever their cravings take them. And so when you help somebody, it's, you give, give something to someone who's going to be lasting for a long time. And giving is also a good topic for contemplation. As the Buddha said, when your practice is getting discouraging, stop and reflect on your generosity. At least you have some goodness to you. And if you try to think about the times when you were generous, when you didn't have to be, and you can't think of it, well, go out and be generous. Make the news in the world that you want to meditate on. And you find that it's uplifting, and it really does feel good, and it really is, as the Buddha said, it's an act of happiness to do these things. You don't have to wait till your next lifetime, but right as you do it, it feels good. The same with virtue. On the one hand, virtue means abstaining from harm, or doing things that are beneath your principles, but it also has a positive sign. When the Buddha says, don't kill, he also recommends that you be gentle and protective of other beings. Same with the precept against stealing, you also protect other people's belongings as best you can. Precept against illicit sex, you respect people's rights. You don't let your lust overcome the bounds of propriety. Precept against lying, you, you try to be a person who tells the truth, you try to promote friendships, you try to promote goodness in other people as well. Yeah, there's a positive side to virtue, too. But again, if something doesn't cost you any money, now you may find that you have to be put at a disadvantage sometimes when you can't lie. But the things you get through lying are not really worth anything, because you've traded your virtue for what? Some things that are just going to slip through your fingers. And the fact that you lost your virtue, that's not going to slip through your fingers anytime soon. That's going to stay with you. And again, this is a good topic to reflect on when the meditation gets dull or dry. At the very least, you're not harming anyone. Like you're sitting right here right now, you're not harming anybody at all. And there's goodness to that. And finally, with the meditation and the list of the topics of bunya, inner quality or inner worth. The usual meditation topic is meditation on goodwill. The Buddha talks about this. He gives a few images. He said it's like a person blowing a concord horn that can be heard in all directions. You want your goodwill to spread out in all directions all at once. He talks about one point, if, even if bandits are sawing you apart, cutting off your limbs with a two-handled sword, you should still have goodwill for them, starting with them and then spreading to the whole world. And there are a few goodwill phrases, like the ones we chant just now. May all beings may all be happy, free from oppression, free from trouble. May they look after themselves with ease.
That last one there is to remind you that being's real happiness is when they can look after themselves with ease. You're not saying you're promising to be there for them. You want them to be there for themselves. But this is to remind you, when you're dealing with difficult people, you don't want ill will to get in the way. That's also so you can trust yourself. And other people do benefit from your goodwill. Not only the good things you do and say, but also the good things you think. I mean, some people really are sensitive to when a meditator has spread goodwill in their direction. There was a woman who was one of John Fuang's students who was going through a rough time one time. So one evening as I was meditating, I spread some goodwill in her direction. A few days later, she came to the monastery. She said, the other night, did you spread goodwill to me? She said, I felt it. So some people do feel these things. And it's good practice as you're spreading goodwill to think of all the beings in the universe and to think of the ones who, for whom you might feel resentment or the ones for whom you might look down on. And remind yourself of the Buddhist teachings on, on rebirth. And we've been to all these places before. As you said, you see someone who's really wealthy, enjoying all kinds of pleasures. You've been there before. You see someone who's really poor and diseased. You've been there before. In fact, whatever type of person you can think of, you've been there before. This is one of the sad things about Western Buddhism is they've thrown away this really good teaching. It's really great for empathy. It means that nobody in the world is a stranger. In the sense that the, the suffering that they're going through is not strange. You've been there. You've had that suffering too. They say that after the Buddha's awakening, he surveyed the world with the eye of a Buddha. And he saw that all beings were on fire, with the fire as a passion, aversion, and delusion. And that grew out of his second knowledge on the night of his awakening. He was looking at all beings and seeing how they were being born in line with their karma, and how long it had been going on. And it was a combination of those two, two visions that had propelled him to teach. So you think, think about these things, and it helps you do good for other beings. By the sense, as I said, that nobody's a stranger, regardless of race, gender, economic status. We've all been through this together, and we're all suffering together. So you want to keep on creating more suffering? Think of that other vision the Buddha had before he got on the path to awakening. The world was just a little stream drying up, and it was filled with these fish competing with one another for that last little gulp of water. For what? You get the gulp of water, and you still die. And the karma you've created in fighting all the other fish, that sticks with you. So why add to the suffering? So it's for these reasons that we develop goodwill. Even working on the breath meditation, it is a form of goodwill for yourself as you look after the energies in your body. You begin to realize that you've been placing a lot of burdens on your mind, unnecessary burdens, by allowing these energies to get all out of whack. But if you work on them and Get a sense of being balanced here in the concentration. A lot of the burdens in the mind get lifted, and then you have more time for other people. So the meditation is its a gift to yourself and to other people. And you, when you want to dedicate the merit of your meditation, okay, you've got something good to dedicate. As to whether they're 
receive the merit or not. That depends on their ability to know and to appreciate, and, as I say, anamodana in Pali, which basically means to show their appreciation, see that it was a good thing that what you did. Because that then becomes a meritorious act on their part. In other words, they appreciate goodness. And the more we can get an appreciation of goodness in the world, the better off we'll be. So as you're meditating, that's one good way of developing inner worth, which then becomes a happiness that spreads around. It's the best way to look for happiness. All three ways of developing inner worth. are forms of happiness without blame. Years back I was going to be giving a Dharma talk on Buddhist ideas on the pursuit of happiness. And the afternoon before I gave the talk I happened to visit one of my old college professors. His field was Christian ethics. And he asked me what the talk that night was going to be about. Knowing the type of person he was, he wanted it quick and direct. And so I said, it's basically about how Buddhism teaches that the search for happiness doesn't have to be hedonistic. And he said, well, I wish I could hear that talk. But this is, all, this is what it's all about, this search for inner goodness is the wise way to search for happiness. Because it's not just for you. It's a happiness that spreads around.